Hi, my name is Zai. Companies is starting to release budget mice with some great specs. The Minos X3 is from Cougar and using a top optical sensor with the 3310, which can be found in a lot of mice that people use in competition. The only issue it really has is it can spin out using the tilt slam test, which I'll show you later. For most people, it's not a problem. It also uses Omron switches on the buttons, which are very popular in all game types. And with just a bit of cable, it only weighs about 85 grams, which is very light. Sounds great so far, right? And it will sound even better with an MSRP of about $30, which means we may see it even cheaper than that. Great value. So what's the catch? No catch really, it just depends what you want from a mouse, because the tech specs are only part of the puzzle. Let's start with the shape. Here's a tour so you know what it looks like. It seems fairly standard, but the pronounced curves on the side are what turn me off this a bit. They're not bad, it's still mostly safe, and they have the curve to assist with picking it up, but I don't think the back needed to be this wide. It kind of flares out. That level of curve is only okay for the thumb, but this is using an ambidextrous design, even though it only has buttons on the left. So I would have suggested they flatten out the right side for comfort. The button slope is a bit steep, so not ideal for fingertip grip, and the hump is toward the back. The width between the fingers is about 5.7 centimeters. The base length is about 10 centimeters. Full length may be about 12, and the height is around four. So I'd say it's a medium mouse that should work for palm grip under 18.5 centimeters. Claw grip 17 to 20, and fingertip between 17.5 and 20. The weight distribution feels quite close to the sensor, so the balance is decent. Here it is next to the G303 and Death Adder, so you know the size of it. Moving on to the buttons, here's a listen to the clicks. Left and right feel a bit spongy, like the tension isn't high enough. However, that does allow for quieter clicks, so that could be a good thing. They seemed fine in game. Mouse 3 is fairly easy to press in, and the wheel is smoother than it is tight for the individual steps, so maybe more suited to browsing, but still usable in game. The side buttons have a decent amount of travel, and a fairly standard click. Not bad, not great. And the color changing button is out of the way, so for me, no accidental clicks. In the latency testing, neither test is accurate, but I put it against the G403 and it performed well. Not quite as good, but not far off either. So I'd say all the buttons are quite good, it just depends what you like. Now to test the implementation of the 3310 optical sensor. It handles rocket jumping easily, of course, and I can't make it spin out. But as usual in the tilt slam test, it's hard, but it can be made to spin out. Again, this is very normal for these sensors, and it's really not an issue for most people. In the sniper test at 1600 and 400 dpi, it tracks pixel by pixel, and as smoothly as expected. However, on a hard pad, I think the liftoff distance is causing an issue. It's jerky, so I suggest sticking with cloth pads for this one, unless they say the liftoff distance can be changed. I don't have an accurate test, but the acceleration levels seem fine, and the liftoff distance is about 1 dvd on soft pads, and as said, it's not tracking properly on hard. I can't feel any delay, it's quite responsive. And testing the 360 against the G403, it's close but slightly off. So as usual, measure your 360 before changing mice. In the line test on a cloth pad, there's no jitter, no angle snapping, and no skipping. But you see the red line. The hard pad is really bad. Everything is great on cloth pads though. So it's a great performance, just maybe not on hard pads. For build, it sounds fine while tapping it, but when shaking it, there is something rattling. And even when holding everything I can on it, something inside is still rattling. For the textures, it's smooth plastic on top, and a rubberized texture on the sides. They feel pretty good. The cable isn't the best, it's kind of a sticky rubber. Flexible enough, but could easily be better. It's usable. No software for this one, but you can adjust the DPI on the base, with the usual 400, 800, 1600, and 3200, along with the polling rate. And the lights are changed by the button on the top. You can go through the modes, so first showing you the colors. You can also turn the LED off, and it has a nice RGB cycling mode and also a breathing cycling mode too. And lastly, as a bonus, this is the Arena Black. I reviewed the Orange Arena already, and I really liked it, but my issues were that it was a bit small at 80 by 30 centimeters, and it was too orange. This solves one of those problems at least, as it's mostly black, and I think it looks amazing, but I still don't want orange on there at all, maybe white or gray. As for the size, with a fairly big keyboard, it doesn't leave you much space. I'd recommend using these with 10 keyless boards, Otherwise, I think it should be 90 centimeters. 
but if you don't need much room, I guess that's okay. So in conclusion for the pad, I really like it other than the size and maybe the orange. And the mouse is actually really good, especially at that price. The performance is solid, the shape is good enough to allow for decent aim, although it could be better, and the overall quality is fairly good. So if you're after a cheap mouse that should allow you to play at a decent level, this is definitely one to consider. And that's why it's quite high on the top 40, number 18 at the time of this review. It's just a good cheap mouse, but I'd say you're going to have to base your decision on the shape. Hope that helps. Once it's out, I'll leave links for where to buy it, so check the description for those, including ways you can help support the channel. Special thanks to Kuka for sending this out for review, and as always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next. Blue wins the round.